Hi folks, Jeffrey Grossman here, and thank you so much for having me at a marketing business training event. I'm really excited to be here to share with you three strategies to generate new patients with ease. Even if you don't like marketing, even if it's difficult for you, or even if it's the kind of thing that when you hear about business and marketing, you want to run the other way, I'm going to hopefully help alleviate some of that pain and give you some insight into three strategies that can easily help you generate more new patients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen with you and jump right in. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me at the end of this training. My email is jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, at acupuncturemediaworks.com. So feel free to reach out to me there. Other than that, I'm going to dive in here and just start sharing my screen and share with you some other information about how to grow your practice. For those of you that don't know me, my background is in advertising and graphic design, and I graduated from that world in 1998, and then I got all disenchanted and realized that that wasn't really for me, and I had this epiphany, went through some back pain, didn't have any course to alleviate the pain, went to see an acupuncturist, and what do you know? Voila, like magic, my back pain was healed, and that got me on this trajectory to go ahead and to become an acupuncturist myself. So I graduated acupuncture school in 1997. I started Acupuncture Media Works in 2002, which is a company that provides marketing materials and printed tools and cl clinic forms and handouts and brochures for acupuncturists out of a necessity for wanting them myself. Because with my background as a designer and in, in, uh, in advertising, <clears throat> There wasn't really anything that resonated with me enough that I wanted to share with my own patients. So I needed to develop some own tools for myself. Over time, other practitioners were like, whoa, where'd you get this? I want to get those. And I started Acupuncture Media Works in that way. From there, in 2010, I started a website service where we build websites for acupuncturists. And then after that, we started creating, creating a digital resource online called AccuDownloads, which actually started in 2014 to help give acupuncturists done for you digital tools from everything from social media graphics to newsletters to email templates to PowerPoint presentations to videos to all the things that are helpful and useful for you to grow your practice in this modern age. And we just revamped AccuDownloads uh, about a year ago and it's a whole new brand new platform uh, that, um, that you can check out if you're interested. Um, so I also spoke at different conferences at Fastoma, uh, the uh, New England School of Acupuncture, Siom. I was a practice management teacher who taught 65 hours of practice management, which is huge uh, because when I went to acupuncture school at NISA, I only maybe got a weekend crash course in business and advertising. And to have a training where you could have a 65-hour training course in practice management was amazing. So I was really grateful that I was able to facilitate that for several years at Middleway. And I'm currently a board member for the American Society for Acupuncturists, helping um, them, um, you know, m volunteer my time to help them with membership activities and other other uh, other website development things from their end. So that's a little bit about me. That is my back end. Um, and if you stay until the end, I am going to give you access to this ebook called Acupuncture Table Talk. And this is something that we just released. This is all about patient education, and I'm going to share with you why this is helpful and how you could use this in your practice there. All right, so acupuncture school pretty much taught you everything that you need in order to make the correct differential diagnosis, choose the most powerful point prescriptions, the best herbal remedies, to learn how to read pulses, to do a sure point testing, and to get you clinically prepared to become an amazing acupuncturist, right? But they left out some very important pieces of growing your practice, which is marketing business skills. Because most people, when they talk about or when they hear about marketing, they run the other way. Because marketing is one of the things that is further from our reality as acupuncturists. But the truth is that we have to wear 
two hats. The hat of the healer, which school gave you an incredible background at developing and being part of, and also the hat of a business person, because who else is going to be doing your billing, your scheduling, your social media, your marketing, your insurance billing, your 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 patient follow-ups and all that stuff, right? So being an acupuncturist, my friend, not only are you an amazing, great healer, but you're also an entrepreneur. So welcome to this reality. I know you already know that right now, but I need to point that out to you because it's you could be the best healer, the best acupuncturist, the best cupper. You know, you could do amazing gua sha, but if you don't have a steady stream of patients coming in on a regular basis, how are you going to be able to disseminate your information and your knowledge and your expertise if you don't have a steady flow of patients coming in, right? So that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I'm here to share with you is to how you can generate patients with ease in your practice, even if you're an introvert or even if you are good and skilled at marketing already, okay? A couple of things I want to just lay the groundwork for is that you've got to really plant the seeds for marketing because it takes time. Just because you do a marketing event today or just because you attend a health fair today doesn't mean that patients are going to be scheduling with you immediately, okay? It's important to really know the fact that you are planting seeds towards knowledge, towards experience, to people building that trust uh, factor. They got to get to know you. They got to get to like you. And then they got to sign up to become patients with you. And I wish somebody told me this when... I did my first health fair at a health food store back in Seattle when I would just stand there at the booth and, you know, I would just have my Meridian guy and my little table and my my brochures and I'd be like, hi, my name's Jeffrey. How are you? How are you doing? Do you know about acupuncture? You know, have you tried acupuncture before? And that was great that I was actually there doing it, but I didn't get any response. And what I needed to do over time was to sort of plant the seeds and educate patients, ask them questions, as opposed to sort of tell them and talk at them. Um, So I noticed that as I would get myself out there in the world doing events, teaching classes, slowly I was planting those seeds for people to come and see me. Okay, the other thing too is that you owe it to your patients to be a great marketer. And what I mean by that is that if you aren't out there trying to get in front of people so you can educate them about what you do and what you offer, somebody else is, right? So you can rest assured that if somebody is like, I need pain, help, help for my neck pain, and you're you're not out there or you're not in their sphere of influence, that there's a chiropractor or a physical therapist or even massage therapist that's out there getting in front of that person. So If you want to help people, if you're committed, like I assume you are, wanting to help people with being in practice, you've got it. You really owe it to your patients to be a great marketer, right? Because if you're not going to be doing it, somebody else is, and somebody else is going to be getting those people into your practice. And one thing that I founded Acupuncture Media Works on, and all of the businesses that I've worked on, on is the importance of patient education. And patient education is important because it helps people understand symptoms and it gives them a a new meaning and a new appreciation and a new awareness of what's going on with them. So when you take the time to educate your patients about their symptoms, they can really understand the cause of their symptoms and they can understand what the discomfort is that they're experiencing, why they're experiencing or why it's showing up now, and they might even have a really good understanding of how to address that over time. So understanding, when people have an understanding around what's going on, it kind, excuse me, it causes their discomfort and imbalance. It allows them to take steps to make these different lifestyle changes and to mitigate the strains that they're experiencing that are aggravating their shoulder or their low back. And over time, it helps them improve their health in the long run. So they're more likely to work with you when they have an understanding of what's causing the issue rather than simply coming in and not really knowing what you're really doing for them. So proper patient education can provide this framework and this awareness of their symptoms, which is really important. Also, proper patient education 
changes the way patients think of acupuncturists, right? So many people think that acupuncturists, um, <clears throat> that, that, that we're too woo-woo, right? <laughs> that we only treat pain, or they even think that it's a religious, uh, a religion. And, and I've had that comment before to me, and I've heard other acupuncturists say that, that their patients have asked them about that too, because patients have, feel like they have to believe in it to work in order for it to have it actually work for them. But, you know, the truth is that people should think of an acupuncturist as someone who works with the meridian systems and improves function and the smooth flow of chi in their bodies and energy throughout their body. And they also... When you, when you educate them properly, they also have a really clear understanding around the fact that you have a four-year degree or maybe even a doctorate degree on what it takes to become an acupuncturist. Most people believe that maybe it's a short program. Maybe you can learn it in a weekend course. Who knows? But when you can change the way a person thinks about acupuncture and acupuncture through your patient education, it encourages a deeper awareness of why they're coming to see you. And it also stimulates the fact that people will more readily refer others to you, okay? And another thing about patient education, which is really important, is when people um, are properly educated, they can, you can more easily manage their expectations. Then they have an understanding around what to expect, what potential time frame things might start getting better or improving or if you know or if it's even going to work for them at all so when a patient comes in for their appointment they and they have a clear idea as to the type of the treatment that they're going to receive and how it can help them feel more you know more satisfied with the care they're more likely to, and, and you're actually share with them, you know, a, a treatment plan, a time frame, a, a moment when you're going to um, evaluate them and, and reflect back on, you know, the initial visits and where they are now. Um, you can really manage their expectations because a lot of times people come in, they're like, oh, I'm going to go try acupuncture. They think that they try it once and then all of a sudden their pain is gone like a magic bullet, right? And we know that acupuncture isn't necessarily a magic bullet. You might get some great results right away, but to really address that underlying condition, you've got to really educate and explain to them all about that. And when people are more educated, they're more likely to follow directions because they're people that we're working with. They have busy lives. They may forget about things. They may fail to prioritize any exercises or qigong or herbs or breathing techniques or even showing up for specific treatments for you. So when you go through that process of educating them, then it, it you know then they're able to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it and that this exercise or this herb or this breathing technique is designed for a specific purpose. And they're more likely to stick with it because they start seeing results happen with it. <clears throat> also helps build confidence and trust because when you really clearly explain to people what's going on with them, then they feel more comfortable. When you can lay out a time frame and what their expectations are and you can manage those expectations and you can answer and overcome their objections, that really builds trust and confidence between you and your patient. And it comes down to the fact that effective patient education, it, it's an investment in building trust and creating a deep connection with each patient. And when you build trust, that equals patience for life. Okay, so you have to be able to effectively educate every patient. And one of the things that I want to recommend that you do with each visit is something called table talk. And table talk is the patient education that happens each visit about core acupuncture principles. It stimulates awareness of how the body works and heals and plants the seeds to refer friends and family members. So Acu table talk are questions of the day that are designed to educate and increase referrals and keep you, you as an acupuncturist focused on where you are with this patient along their healing journey, okay? And what what I have for you here is this ebook called Table Talk. I think it's like, I don't know, 15 pages or so. And it talks about, it gives you questions 
on the core principles, body function principles, core acupuncture concepts, meridian imbalance, and lifetime care. So it's set up with different topics for you that you could go through during each visit and start planting those seeds towards awareness and start mitigating those 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 objections and start really let properly educating your patients and asking them, you know, like like really communicating them in a way that 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 they understand and that that light bulb goes on with them. So that means when when um when, when a patient gets asked from a friend or family member or coworker what they're coming to see you for, they have a really clear understanding and can explain that to that person. And one thing that you might want to try when you go back to the clinic next is ask your patients this question. Say, "Hey, Jeffrey, you know, if you were at a party and somebody came up to you and said, what is your acupuncturist doing or what happens in the acupuncture clinic, what would you say? All right. And you'll be surprised. And this will give you some insight into where your patient education might be lacking and where you can focus. OK, so download this ebook. It's acudownloads.com slash table talk. It's got it's got chapters and just questions for you that you could be asking your patients every single visit that that will then let give you the opportunity to further educate them inspire them and encourage them to, about acupuncture and the depth of the healing that you can offer them okay great all right so what is what are the, one of the one of the three things i really want to talk with you about today is what your core message is and a core message is a marketing message that is fundamental to communication between your your you know, a company which is your practice and a prospective customer, which is a prospective patient, okay? And this is really important. This is one of the things that I hammer home with my, with, um, with, 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 with the students in the practice management classes to make sure that they have a dialed in core message because people don't buy the best products. They buy the ones that are com communicated the clearest, right? So when you think about McDonald's, it's not really the best food. When you think about Coca-Cola, it's not really the best drink, but they're communicating clearly, right? So if your competitor has an inferior service, but they're a better communicator or they're better at marketing or getting their message out there, who's going to win, right? If they can communicate better and more clearly, they will beat you to the next patient that's looking for care because prospects never knew that you had a better service and they never knew that they might need it. So because they never came across you or that your message wasn't clear enough to stimulate them to reach out to you. So you have to communicate simply and easily in a way that people can understand. You have to directly communicate with your prospects and services, not only to help them survive, but to help them thrive. And quite literally, if you are communicating about your services and it's not directly relating to help people survive and thrive, then they're not going to be paying attention because it's built into our DNA that, and people are listening to that primitive part of their brain where, you know, they're asking themselves, are you going to help me get ahead? Are you going to help me be strong? Is this technique going to, you know, really help me overcome this potential problem? Is it going to help me overcome my pain? Is my headache going to go away? Or whatever they have, people are always trying to find out things that are going to help them survive and thrive. And they're always looking for this connection that's going to help them do that. So we want to communicate about how we help our customers survive and thrive as simply and as clearly as possible. So I'll ask you this, is your message that you're, you're communicating helping customers understand how you can help them survive and thrive? What's your answer on a scale one to 10? When you land on your website, on your business cards, on your brochures, does it suggest and express the fact that you're helping them surviving and thriving. Where are you on this level here? Can your customers, your patients, name the pain problem that your practice solves if you ask them, right? So great question. So, you know, if somebody asks them why they go see Jeffrey for at the clinic, 
can that person clearly explain why they see Jeffrey? Okay, this is another important point. One, not at all. Ten, absolutely. And is your message clear and simple? Okay, so do you have a message that is clear, that's simple, that you can actually get out there easily? Okay, so I'll ask you this. What business are you in? Okay, most of us think that we're in the business of, of delivering one of the safest and you know natural types of medicine in the world, right? Am I right? Right? But plain and simple, we're really in the business of marketing acupuncture care, right? And so, because you've got to actively find and attract the right people and have your marketing wheels consistently turning. So you've got to continually be getting your message out there so you can be in the business that you really want to be in, which is healing and helping people. But in order to do that, you have to master this business side, this marketing side. Unless you have gobs of cash and you can hire somebody to do that for you, that's great. If you don't, this is where you're at. Initially, first and foremost, you are in the business of marketing acupuncture care. And then once you get the people in, then you're in the business of what you really signed up for to become an acupuncturist, which is administer the best healing possible, okay? So what are you marketing, okay? Are you marketing acupuncture? Are you marketing herbs? Are you marketing transformation? Are you marketing stressing less or a fertility clinic? Or are you a spa clinic? Do you market longevity treatments? Are you community acupuncture? What makes you different? And this is the step in defining who you are and why folks should choose you. And we're gonna go through these other parts right now, the three steps to crafting your core message, okay? So the first step is identifying the problem, right? So the problem is, what's the pain point that you help your customers resolve? What problem does your customer experience? And in this step, you've got to identify your customer and the major problem that you help them eliminate. So where's their life uncomfortable? You can get specific here and concise. So for instance, like people are tired of taking pills. So we offer traditional Chinese medical treatments for the relief of chronic pain, and we help people have less pain, more movement, and a better life. So there's a target customer here there's a specific pain. So the, the target customer is people who take medications and their, you know, their pain point, like quite literally in this example, is that they have chronic pain, right? And then, then so you, it's, just, it's gotta be really clear. Like, like, like let's say you're a fertility clinic, okay? So people are try, tired of, of you know, going to the IVF clinic to, to, to try to get pregnant and they are looking for a safe, natural and effective approach. And, you know, so you at the, at your clinic, you offer X, Y, Z to accommodate that. Okay. So the first part is to really identify what is the pain point that you solve. And I don't mean physical pain, if, unless that's what you do, but Maybe your people are, are, are athletes and you're, you work in sports medicine and, and your, your patients are trying to win their next race or be better at a marathon. What's the problem that's stopping them from doing that? Okay. Maybe you, again, like for instance, if like maybe there's a couple who are trying to conceive and they're having issues and their pain point is that they are lying awake at night, stressed and anxious and struggling because they want to start a family already. So that is the problem that they're experiencing. The next part of creating your core message is what is your solution, right? What's unique about your practice that addresses their potential pain, right? What can only you offer them that is very different from the acupuncturist down the street? Okay, and here, this is where you, you talk about your solution, right? This is the key that really separates you from the next practitioner down the street. Even though you, you practice acupuncture and they practice acupuncture, and even though you practice the same acupuncture, maybe yours is more gentle and you, use, uh, you, you, you don't have an aggressive approach or you use state-of-the-art acupuncture along with you know, uh, laser therapy, okay? So what, what solutions do you offer to address the problem that's unique and different from the other person, okay? And then the other thing, then the final thing is for setting up your um, 
for setting up your core messages coming up with the reward. So how does your customer's life look after their pain is resolved, right? So this describes how their life changes or has changed as a result of working with you. So maybe now they can live, you know, the reward is that they can have a happy, you know, loving, carefree family because they're able to have babies now. Or maybe they can go out and win their next race because you fix their shoulder pain or knee pain. Um, excuse me, in that way. Sorry about that. Um, so let's couple couple examples. Too many people struggle with pain and injuries, right? That's the problem. Too many people have pain and they have injuries. That's the pain point. Your solution is that we provide effective treatment that allows you to perform well in life, sports, and work. So your solution only here is that we provide effective treatment. And here's what it does. This is the reward. It allows you to perform well in life, sports, and work without pills, surgery, and high cost. Okay, that's clear. That's a sync. That's unique. Okay, here's another one. We offer a unique individualized evaluations to treat injuries in tween, with Twina, okay? So the problem, the pain is that you deal with injuries. What's unique about you is you offer unique and individualized evaluations and you, you and you treat people using Twina, cupping, and acupuncture, okay? That's your solution, even though every acupuncturist does the same thing, okay? So, and the reward is that your practice members can go out, win their next race, and feel great, okay? Another one is, People are tired of taking pills. That's the problem. They're tired of taking pills. Your solution is that you offer traditional Chinese medical treatments and state-of-the-art therapies for the relief of chronic pain. So that, here's the reward, we help people have less pain, more movement, and a better life. Okay? That's easy, that's simple, that's straightforward. So let me give you a couple examples of, of the businesses that I work in. So. Most acupuncturists don't like marketing and have no idea how to bring in patients. Those are the pain points. Hate marketing, no idea how to bring in new patients. Our unique solution is that we offer a wide range of business, marketing, and online solutions so you can connect with more customers, grow your business, generate greater income, and make the world a bit better. Okay, so our solution is that we have a wide range of business, marketing, and online solution, right? So that, you know, here's the reward that you guys would get is that you can grow your business, generate more income and make the world a bit better because you're helping more people. Okay. Another one is with AccuDownloads. So most acupuncturists are not great writers, good designers, or even tech savvy. That's the problem. Not good writers, not good designers, not tech savvy. So our unique solution is that we hired a team of writers, designers, computer geniuses, and high quality professional to create, and the, and the reward, it, it, the solution is that because we create high quality, professional, and cost effective social media and patient education solutions. And here's the reward so that you can log in anywhere, anytime, find what you need to attract new patients, keep patients in care, and streamline your marketing efforts. Okay? So I'd encourage you, one of the first things to do is to really think about what your core message is and how you help people, what separates you from everybody else and developing something along the lines that we talked about here earlier, okay? One thing to ask yourself is, is the message that you are communicating helping customers understand how you could help them survive and thrive? And can your customers name the main problems that your services solve? If you ask them, okay, if it is great, if not, your core message isn't working. Okay. So ask your patients the question, Hey, you know, can, if somebody was to ask you what you come see me for, what would you ask? What would you say to them? You know, what, what do you think the main problems here at the clinic are that we solve? Okay. Ask them the questions and you'll know where you need to dive into with your patient education. Okay. So the third, the second, uh, the second easy way to generate uh, to grow your practice is to building a referral network. And one thing that's really important is is this idea of Sisyphus, pushing the rock up the hill, pushing it up, gets to the top, uh, rolls back down again, pushing it up, up to the top, uh, rolls back down again, and so on. So referrals are the lifeblood of any practice. So no matter 
how great of a practitioner you are, you it's constantly an uphill battle in order to make a living until you embrace the idea that once you have spent the time to um to 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 market and to bring in new patients, you've got to keep those patients in care as long as you can. I know that in my practice our inactive patient files are larger than our active patient files and that that's pretty much across the board for most practitioners if you've been in practice for any length of time. But your inactive patients are I mean, I mean, your patients that you have on board, both active and inactive, are the lifeblood of getting referrals in your practice, okay? So I want to encourage you through this section here to actually ask for referrals. And one of the things I'd ask you is, when's the best time to ask for referrals? For me, it's always been the minute somebody comes off the treatment table. So the minute they come off the treatment table, I'll ask them, how are you doing? They'll hopefully say, I feel a lot better. Thank you so much. I'll say, hey, you know, you've been doing really well here at the clinic. And I want to let you know that I'm looking to expand the practice, help more people like yourself. And I'm wondering if you could help me out. And they'd say, sure, no problem. I'd be like, well, can you think of two or three people who um, are experiencing similar problems like you are, let's say they have headaches or back pain, um, you know, can you think of two or three people that, 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 that are experiencing similar problems that you, that you have been? They'll be like, yeah, sure, I can. Be like, well, you know, if I give you these, uh, th- these cards, would you be willing to hand these to them um, and, and, you know, to, 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 to uh, get them in for a referral? And most people would say yes. And one of the important pieces about that little conversation is is to have a card that with a special offer on the back of it, okay? And that special offer would get them, you know, get them to come in. But the important piece is, let you know, let's say, so I, I, I'll role play this one more time. It's like, so, hey, Jeffrey, how are you feeling? Great. I feel good. Excellent. Can you think of, you know, you've been doing really great here at the clinic. I'm wondering if you can think of a few people who might be able to benefit from the same care that you've been getting here at the clinic. Um, Can you think of anyone? Sure. Yeah, I can think of a few people. Great. Well, if I hand you these, if three of these cards, would you be willing to hand these to those people that you can think of? Absolutely. So when you, when you say that to a patient, you, excuse me, when you say that to a patient, you get a micro commitment from them. And that micro commitment is what actually gets them to really follow through a little better with uh, getting more referrals in the practice. So best time to ask for referrals, right after they come off the treatment table and actually asking them about that and to have gift certificates or cards ready with a special offer on that and um, and, 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 and get them involved and enrolled by asking them if they'd be willing to hand these out or share these with other people, okay? Um, so people refer to you because they're confident in your care, right? They, they feel comfortable in knowing what's going on. They feel confident in what you're doing and how you're working with them. They value your work you because you've probably been offering a high level of service with them and um and through all of that through all of the care that you've been giving you know through all of your messaging maybe you stand out from other people which would make them more likely to refer others to you okay and also most people refer to because they had a great experience no one's going to refer because they had a crappy experience at an acupuncturist or another doctor right if anything they're going to badmouth you or write some bad reviews um but a lot of times people when they when they have good experiences they don't even think about needing to refer until you ask them okay so people don't refer because there's a poor rapport, right? You don't have a good connection with them, or maybe you lack the enthusiasm or the passion behind getting the message out there. And I've met a lot of acupuncturists who are not very enthusiastic about being in practice. And it's not just that they're not as busy as they want to be, but they're just there's just something holding them back. And and it's kind of sad to see because this medicine's amazing and it changes lives. And you didn't become an acupuncturist for no reason. You wanted to become an acupuncturist to change lives. So why hide that message? You know, why get out, why, why keep it from everybody? So, um, you know, so becoming enthusiastic, becoming passionate about it can really help shift that. So uh, another people, another reason why people don't refer is because 
maybe they've had objections that you never answered for them. Like, how long is it going to take? Is my insurance going to cover it? You know, do we need a reevaluation? What's, you know, you know, do, do, do the needles hurt or whatever that is. So one, one reason to make sure you do that I encourage my patient, my, my, my students in the, in the practice management class to do is to create a whole list of potential objections, write down your answers and know them, study them, understand them. So when those objections come up, you know exactly how to uh, def de de disintegrate them through uh, through a, you know clear, concise, confident communications. Okay, that's you know another another reason why people don't refer. They don't feel you don't feel confident. You come across kind of a little bit of wishy washy, and you know again I think that goes back to the fact that acupuncturists they're not, they're healers they're not marketers. But the thing is you've got a you've got a great medicine under your belt there. So don't hide it from anybody else. Okay, get out there and share. You know spread that message of good health through acupuncture. All right. Lack of education because people might not know that acupuncture is good for allergies or asthma or PMS or digestive troubles or colitis or, you know, blood pressure. So we as acupuncturists aren't really doing our due diligence in further educating our patients on the benefits of care if we don't continually tap into patient education. And that goes back to that, that table talk book. That table talk book really gives you all the tools that you need, all the questions that you can drip the content to about, um, about uh, 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 to further patient education, okay? Um, let's see, uh, efforts go unnoticed. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe they, don't, they don't see that things are changing so well, so quickly, and that's why it's important to deliver a report of findings because you, you deliver a report of findings. Here's what I found. Here's what's wrong. Here's how long it's going to take. Here's what you can expect. Here's how much it's going to cost. And then let's reevaluate after these visits. And so you create this, this, um, this, uh, th this time frame, this timeline for them of care, and they really trust and understand what you're, what they're going to be doing with that. Also, a lot of times people just perceive that you have a full practice and that you might not need any more referrals. And, and this happened to me before too. I started doing a patient referral campaign and people were like, oh, I didn't know you were looking for more patients. You seem busy all the time. And yeah, sure I was and am, but um, but but we're looking for new patients all the time. So that's that practice full perception. And people aren't, aren't convinced that maybe you're the one for them. So that's why patient education is really important. And that's why I encourage you to really embrace this aspect and grab that ebook that we got available for you. So a couple ways to really get re patient referrals is to um, start from day one. Right, the first phone call that you are on, you you be like, "Hi, this is you know Jeffrey's acupuncture clinic. Um, can I help you?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure. I heard you know I'm gonna refer, I'm gonna schedule an appointment with Jeffrey." They're like, great. Who referred you? Right. So you're you're planting that seed right away of from the first call with that person coming in. The other way to get referrals is to identify your A patients. Right. So who are the people that you love. So when you look at your schedule, you're like, oh my God, I love you, love you, love you, love you. Ooh, I'm a little, uh, it's going to be rough seeing you today and so on, right? So like, I'm sure if you've been in practice for any length of time, you've got the patients that you love, 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 and they love you too. And then you've got those patients that you're like, ah, it's a little bit of a struggle to connect up with them, right? So identifying your A patients are the people that are most likely able and willing to refer to you. So I encourage you to really make a list of all the people that are your A patients that love you, you love them, they, they follow up for care because that's the kind of, you know, you want to attract more people like them, right? They're, they probably swim in the same circles that, that their friends are in and they're, you know, they're more likely to bring in similar people who are like-minded like them. Be specific for what you're asking for when you're that you're asking for referrals. Be like, hey, I'm looking to bring in new patients, and we've got these referral cards. Are you willing to hand these out? And so on. Um, prepare and practice what you're going to say, because like like literally another thing that we do in the practice management class is to script out what you're going to say and learn the scripts so you know what you're going to say. It comes off easily. That's where the confidence comes in because you've already practiced it. You've already developed it. You have already know what you're going to be saying and what you're going to be doing. So that's really helpful for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> 
and <clears throat> excuse me, um, and actually ask patients, right? A lot of times it's like, oh, I'm going to be getting referrals, but um, but you never act. You know, you're, you're like, I want more referrals, but you never actually ask for them. All right. And I know that sometimes a lot of practitioners that I've been coaching with in the past, they like they're they're nervous about asking that question. And I encourage you to actually ask. And again, starting with your A patients, because your A patients are the ones that love you, right? You love they love you as much as you love them. You have a good rapport, you got a good kismet going on there. And so start with them and say what I said earlier, which is, hey, you know, um, you're doing great. It's awesome. Can you think of other people who are experiencing the same problem? If I give these uh, cards to you or these gift certificates to you, would you be willing to hand these out to those people that you just thought of? Okay, great. Excellent. Good. You can provide incentives. Make sure you follow up after you get referrals, thanking people for the referrals. Ask for any feedback from people in the clinic, especially from your A patients. You could do a survey. And you get some information that you could use that might help bring you more patients in. And make sure that you have your materials ready, like whether they're cards or gift certificates or piece of paper, whatever it is that you have available to hand out to the people so they can um, hand it out to their friends and family members. So a couple things to have, like signs. Th these are some of the materials that, are, that we have available in AccuDownloads, right? So you can have some flyers and some brochures out the, about Patient Appreciation Day, asking for new referrals, new patient specials. And these are like 8.5 by 11 banners that you can post up and, and put them around your clinic. Um, also having some, uh, some gift certificates like this or some business cards like that that you can actually hand out to patients or a series of different gift certificates that you can download. Um, and again, these are from AccuDownloads. Um, so having done for you certificates that you can um, literally hand out to your patients, all right? So, and one way to get professional referrals is to really make your A list of the professionals. So doing a five mile radius, go to Google, you know, look at the five mile radius, type in chiropractors, you know, your zip code and make a list of all the chiropractors in there. Type in massage therapists and your zip code and make a list of all the people in the five mile radius and physical therapists and osteopaths and other other clinics. So I did a, making a list of all the doctors and the other professionals that you want to network with. Start with the five mile radius, go to Google, type in your zip code and the professional and make the make a list. And those, you know, another thing too, which I don't think is even here, is to ask your patients who they're seeing as a chiropractor or a PT or their MD, uh, because that, that's a great way to start networking with those other doctors that are local too. Okay, so research uh, the doctors. Once you make your list, research them and look for any type of alignment. See if they resonate with you. Uh, you know, maybe you don't want me, you know, if, if you're really into herbs and herbal medicines and natural healing and this other, you know, this doctor you're dealing with is just all about writing prescriptions and medications going for surgery, that might not be the right alignment. But maybe if you're working with a naturopath who deals with a lot of herbs and, and herbal remedies and all of that, maybe that's in more alignment with you. So make sure that, you know, after you make your list, you go through and do a little bit of research and you find out, you, you know, you're like, oh, this I really like what they're doing, what they're up to. Um, I'm going to, you know, connect up with them. Get specific for what you're asking when you when you meet up with people. So one of the things to do is to, you know, what do you want from them, right? So um, like, like, do you want to build a networking relationship? Do you want to refer people to them first and have them refer to you? Um, do you want to, um, you know, pick their brain uh, on, on the type of care that they do and, you know, how, how you guys might be able to work together? Together in that way, um, offer to collaborate and make sure you refer back. So another thing to do is to reach out to the doctors in the area and you know connect up with them, take them to lunch or whatever that is, and offer to collaborate. Maybe you could work together on let's say you, one of the local organizations you connect up with is maybe a massage therapist or a naturopath, and you can collaborate on any event that you want to 
um, potentially put together, or um, or you want to uh, you want to like uh, host a health fair or something like that, or you want to just collaborate on on patients' health in general. Okay, and make sure one of the things that you do is you you refer back. So once somebody refers to you, you can refer back to them. Or one of the best things too that I found was really helpful was I would refer to this doctor beforehand a couple times, several times, and then they finally were like, "Oh, Jeffrey referred five people to me. Let me refer some this person to them too." Right. So that's one way to re- re- relate out is to refer first. Okay, and keep in contact, you know, um, you, you know, have your materials ready for them. So so like when you start referring, you have a nice letter of introduction. Maybe you've got some information on research updates and some content that you can hand uh, and, and deliver to to the doctor or their front desk. Um, and uh, make sure that you provide excellent care and that you take really good chart notes. And so when you refer back, you can send the chart notes along uh, to the to the doctor with a follow up letter about that and uh, make sure you do follow up. Right. So you send a patient back, you refer back and just kind of check in with that doctor once in a while on on the status of, of that patient to see that everything's OK. Then they'll understand that you care and that you've got the best interest at heart for the, the, the same patients that you're both working with. Right. So one thing that we use uh, that's also available in AccuDownloads is this report of findings. And this report of findings is a form that you can actually print out and fill in and share it with uh, as part of your treatment notes when you are uh, working with, um, with, with networking with other professionals, okay? So the other thing too, the final thing that we're gonna talk about today is social media marketing. Oh no! I imagine that some of you guys, when you hear that, you want to run the other way, right? But there's no hiding from social media marketing these days. It's everywhere. And one thing to do is to to start off by <clears throat> first asking your patients, what kind of social channels do they look at on a daily basis? And from there, you'll really have an idea of where you might want to focus your attention. Maybe you you know your audience is mostly on Instagram versus Facebook, okay? So you can focus in those areas as well. So there's this thing called this this engagement pyramid. And this is the rapport building engagement period. So what happens here is you've got to create awareness, right? This is the foundation of everything. You've got to create awareness around the fact that you exist. Okay. And awareness that acupuncture could help with these other and different conditions. And then from awareness, you start dripping information and content out there and people start understanding that, oh, maybe this can work for that condition or they understand that maybe it can help for other things that they maybe not have not thought about before. And then they start believing that it can, they start coming in and then from there they start trusting you because they're in the clinic, they're receiving care. So there's this engagement that happens when people first become aware of you, then they start understanding about what you do, then they believe in what you do, and then they take the next steps and schedule with you because they start trusting the fact that everything here is it has supports the trust factor over here. And the idea is that when, you know, a few things that you could do with internal marketing, um, internal internally in the clinic, to build this awareness and understanding, you could have happy hour events, you could do patient appreciation days, you can offer the report of findings, have a topic of the month going on, promo cards going on, emails going on, all this stuff can be happening internally. Externally, you could be doing talks, right? People will become aware of you. They'll understand that acupuncture could help them. They'll start believing it and they'll start scheduling with you, okay? You could put out research updates. You could do screenings. You could do health fairs. You could do advertising, um, all those things. And marketing, right? So all these sections, the internal marketing and the external marketing here are all about creating awareness and an understanding. And this is, you know, on your website and in the clinic itself, this is where you start building the the belief, right? People start believing that it can work because they're reading 
they're watching videos or they're reading newsletters or they're at your website reading your blog posts or they're getting emails about new releases going on okay so they start really believing that that it can help them now and then again it's going that they're getting they're trusting and engaged with you now because you've done all this foundational work to make them aware to they make them understand to make them believe in this care and then to get them to trust you and engage with you Okay, so what to share on social media? A um, couple things would be educational posts, right? What kind of educational posts can you put out there? So many different great things with acupuncture. Uh, you could put out some testimonials uh, as long as you have the patient's consent. You could talk about behind the scenes things that are going on with you at the clinic. You could talk about promotions. You could launch one frequently asked question that comes in the clinic and i'd encourage you to do this is to keep a running list of all the questions that people have about acupuncture answer those questions and you could do a facetime live or you could just do a post on you know here's the question from patients uh here's my answer and so on okay you could do you could do put out some health tips there's inspirational quotes there's infographics and different research that could be posting on social media okay so um, these are the different platforms I would encourage you to do, at least these two, right? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, definitely if you could do a YouTube channel, that would be great. And in in, in uh, LinkedIn and, and Twitter and TikTok, not sure, you know, I don't do those, but uh, I would encourage you all to kind of embrace Facebook, Instagram, and, and uh, YouTube because those are some of the bigger platforms that most people are on, and those are the ones that help with your search engine optimization as well, okay? So there's a few resources that are available. There's AccuDownloads that has done-for-you content, literally materials that you can grab and use in the clinic, like log in, download what you want, and use it. And Canva is a great tool for you to develop these tools. So if you don't have anything like AccuDownloads or you don't have any other social graphics available, Canva is a great option for you. I think there's a free version and a paid version, uh, but a lot of the tools I know in AccuDownloads are convertible in Canva. And then there's Hootsuite. Hootsuite allows you to take your social media postings and, and schedule them out. So you could spend like one, you know, like one day a month to schedule all of your uh, social media marketing um, through Hootsuite or other platforms like that because you can download the materials that save from Mackie Downloads or build them in Canva and then post them, put them in Hootsuite and schedule them out for the whole month or even a whole year if you've got that time and that bandwidth there. All right. So these are the kinds of things that are available, um, you know, that you could post different content here around different acupuncture points, some things about long haul COVID, acupuncture being uh, preventative, you know, be prevention is better than curing and so on. So these are some of the materials that are available in AccuDownloads itself. I literally did a screenshot of the membership side of AccuDownloads. And here's a sample social media calendar that you can tap into. So this is just five days, Monday through Friday. And Mondays you could post a weekly whiteboard and a weekly whiteboard is basically a, a an, it's an actual whiteboard you have up in the clinic and you write ask me how your chi is today and be like oh so how's my chi today great talking point or hey it's springtime how's your liver doing ask me how right so the people are like wait what, it's spring and liver what do you mean by that boom, you got a conversation starter, okay? So weekly whiteboards are awesome to use and tap into in the clinic. Um, Tuesdays, you could do a meridian of the week or a point of the week or a research update or a meridian imbalance. Wednesdays, you could do a meridian healing sound, quotes, research videos, new techniques. Thursdays, you could talk about herbs, foods, research updates, questions. Fridays, recipes, questions, you know, your FAQs, you could get specific on a condition or inspirational thoughts. So this is, you know, you know, a, a sample calendar that you could just use in the practice here. If you, if you didn't do five days a week, you do Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays and so on. So this just gives you an idea as to how you can go ahead and, um, you know, make a simplified uh, social media calendar for your practice, okay? So don't reinvent the wheel, 
right? Everything's all created for you, whether it's through Canva, whether it's through AccuDownloads. My suggestion to you would be don't reinvent the wheel. If you've got the time, if you've got the, the experience, if you've got the knowledge and even the gumption to make it happen, go ahead and do it. But if you don't, I would check out both AccuDownloads and Canva to see if those are some ways to really short circuit your social media marketing in that respect. Okay, so if you're interested, you can check out AccuDownloads.com um, forward slash SP and actually it's a 14 day free trial and uh, see if anything in there works for you. You can start downloading right away. If you want that ebook that we talked about here, uh, go to AccuDownloads.com slash Table Talk and you'll be able to grab that ebook. And it's, it's one of the things I think is incredibly important for us to establish that baseline for every treatment patient education okay so grab that ebook if not just join naki downloads check it out that ebook and that whole there's a whole training in there about table talk um and check that out so thank you so much for having me here today if you want to reach out to me there's my email address right over there and uh, if you have any questions feel free to send them my way otherwise thank you so much stay awesome stay beautiful and keep changing the world one person, one needle at a time. Take care. Bye-bye.